Hello, this is Real World Audio, and I'm uh, just giving a few pointers on the void pipe cabinet construction. Why does it have this shape and uh, why does it make sense? So basically a void pipe uh, has uh, three panels, uh, like it has like a bottom plate, a front baffle, and, and the back baffle. So the traditional loudspeakers are like this and they also have a top and then you have a box and for the void pipe you basically have a wedge you have a, a triangle and this triangle uh, makes it so powerful and then basically you have this triangle and you have a driver and the driver cone is mounted roughly halfway into the pipe and also there is an air opening here I do not have a shorter piece of wood, but there would be a, a roughly in like this big a port on the inside, which is not truly a port. We just call it a port for lack of a better word. And what the loudspeaker does is that it uses this internal shape as basically as a transmission line. So it doesn't want to stay i'm sorry okay so it looks like this so basically when the loudspeaker the cone makes a movement then 50 percent of the output is radiated out here from the membrane right but the 50 percent of the output which is the back pressure goes to the inside of the cabinet and here the back pressure starts moving this air column which is inside the cabinet and, and this air column, basically, it's also called as a quarter wave pipe because it means that the uh, sound frequency, which corresponds to four times the length of the pipe, it is naturally organized and it's, it's, it act, uh, acts as an acoustic amplifier of sound waves down to the quarter wave frequency uh, that is supported by the length of the pipe and then we have a side panel th that is put here and basically we cut it in half so this is a triangle on the side and the triangle on, on the back side so the two sides are triangles and those sides give stability for the void pipe and in nature the triangle is the most stable uh, shape. So basically, if we would make a cabinet and we would make it square, so it has a top and we put this on top, this is highly unstable. And that's the number one reason why we have problems with loudspeaker cabinets, because this thing resonates and moves like crazy because it not stable uh, and also in addition what we have here when you have a, a box is that you have one wavelength defined by your by the depth of the speaker another defined by the width of your speaker and the third defined by the height of your loudspeaker and the the sound waves which are trapped inside your box resonate at those three frequencies predominantly and you have a frequency output where you have three blips that and big ones that correspond to the uh, frequency that corresponds to the length of each of these dimensions and and that's what we call as the dominant cabinet resonances and that's problem number one Problem number two is that it's not just these dominant cabinet resonances, but this whole thing is very unstable and it has a tremendous other small resonances and uh, vibrations. And, and even though your loudspeaker cone is not moving anymore, there's a lot of delayed uh, response coming out from the cabinet because it keeps on resonating way after the music signal is gone. And that's what we don't want. And that's what people solve today in the loudspeaker industry 
by making the cabinets dead. And my uh, big news flash here is that that issue can not be solved that way because a dead cabinet still does the same thing as, as, uh, as an uh, untreated cabinet, just that the amplitude of those nasties is way lower and we introduce a lot of non-harmonic smear. So basically we are exchanging uh, a, a handful uh, of, uh, of salt in our soup to a pinch of arsenic. So, so something which is much lower in value, but it's way more detrimental to the sound. So that's why dead cabinets uh, just take away life and musicality from the sound. But that's where a void pipe excels because of the triangle shapes. It gives tremendous uh, stability and rigidity. So it prevents uh, a continued vibration and resonance of the front buffer and the back buffer because the sides are keeping them tight. And another big thing is that it does not have that cavity resonance that a, a box cabinet has because it's tapering. So as you go from here to there, it's different frequencies that get amplified by the cabinet. So there is no single defining resonant frequency uh, that would affect the cabinet. So that's why a void pipe, even though it's in a box, it doesn't sound at all like a box speaker. And, uh, and I had a very interesting uh, question, which I would like to draw the response for, is that, you see it now, let, let's just draw it here. So, so the void pipe cabinets are like this, right? We have the driver here, and we have the port opening in the front, and they look like a wet ship. And, and I had an interesting question that what if uh, we would have the void pipe and, and up to, up to the uh, driver, it comes up like a void pipe, but then this part goes straight and this part goes back. So instead of the whole thing like this, we tilt the front back, because in this case, the reflections from here, they would go at an odd angle and we would decrease so if you if we look at it from the front it would look like this right we have the driver we have the port in the bottom and we have reflections from the lower part and we have reflections from the upper part but if we slant the top towards backwards then the reflections will bounce away from us and improve imaging and Yes, that is actually totally true. If we would bounce the top back, then that would slightly improve the imaging because those uh, cues would bounce back another way. However, the front buffer is super narrow, so there is actually very little to gain because that surface area is not so big enough to create uh, enough surface to to create a major smear in imaging. However, if we do this to the cabinet, then we break the triangle. So what it means that we are gaining a little bit in the imaging for the upper frequencies, but because we broke the, the triangle stability, then this shape is unable to give structural rigidity to the cabinet and it will just move and, uh, and, and we would hear much, much more cabinet colorations than normal. Also, if we want to do it this way, then instead of having a single panel for the front buffer, we would need basically one panel for the lower part with the driver, and then we would need a second panel that slants backward for the upper half. So it means that we would have a resonating lower part and a resonating upper part. And now this hurts or low frequency reproduction quite a bit because the front resonator panel contributes quite a bit of the low frequency extension of the loudspeaker because now this uh, corresponds to the quarter wave or the lowest frequency it can uh, reproduce. And now we, it basically we are cutting that frequency in half 
so we are bringing the uh, the effect that the front buffer has on the sound to one octave higher so we'll be losing considerable low end if we if we use uh, that thing and uh, actually this is equivalent as if you have a guitar or a cello and then you have the body of the guitar and the neck or maybe this looks more like a lute and you would just break the body into two pieces and and they are basically unable to resonate together anymore and the sound would be really off the same thing we are doing here and uh, the question whether someone has tried this out before yes there was a try i believe uh, i have seen someone do this and because of the reasons i mentioned they build it out of concrete or granite and um, and uh, and there was only just that single uh, specimen that I heard about maybe 15 years ago and uh, I, I really didn't hear much about that thing it didn't caught on, it was just a one-off thing um, wasn't that much successful, maybe those who heard I don't know, uh, how do they like it, I never heard that thing however I know for one thing, if you want to make it out of concrete, this shape then all the power to you in the world because it now becomes a, a, a really uh, difficult masonry project instead of being the simplest woodworking project in the world so I hope that uh, and also when you have a void pipe it's one of the easiest loudspeakers to move and to position in your home and, and my void pipe survived with me 10 moves so i moved to 10 different places and then they are with me they are the only loudspeaker i carried for all of the moves and they were the easiest to move of all loudspeakers however if it's made of concrete it will be hundreds of uh, kilograms and uh, it will be probably the first loudspeaker the first thing that you are not bringing with you when you are moving from one home to another or you will not even move them from one room to another unless you really think uh, very hard about it. So, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope I gave a few ideas on void pipes and how to implement them, what they do. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.